Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1992 horror comedy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, before I go any further sharing my thoughts on this film, I want to give a special shout out to Brian for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below, and I'll try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. Now, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is an interesting film because in a lot of ways it's a prototype. It's a prototype for a much more well-regarded and well-received uh, adaptation of the same concept. And that's what makes it really intriguing is that it's kind of like an alternate version of the mythos and the characters and just the overall idea that would become popularized uh, with uh, the TV show of the same name. And it's one of those things where it's interesting and that and some other elements make it at least a time waster for me. But this is not what I would consider to be a great movie it's one of those films where it's got some good aspects some good elements to it i think kirsty swanson for instance is a really good lead uh i just wish she was in a better more consistent more well-rounded movie and you know i don't i don't mind other members in the cast like paul rubens steals the show as a lefty and uh, luke perry i can deal with um and of course you got Rucker Hauer, but it feels like Rucker Hauer is wasted in this film because of just the way that his character is handled in the film's screenplay. The movie is directed by a director named Fran Rebel Kazui. And Fran Rebel Kazui, she was known for doing a film called Tokyo Pop. And she didn't really do a whole lot after that yeah she did tokyo pop then she did buffy and then she directed a featurette for the making of buffy and that was it she never directed again and tokyo pop is one of those films where you can kind of get away with a little bit more of a inconsistent kind of uh feel or tone or direction because of the kind of film that it was with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it's a movie that's definitely trying to be very tongue-in-cheek and very comic, and if you don't have the right director for that, it can just come across as lame, and I think that happened way too often with this movie when it comes to the direction. The timing was mostly a major miss, other than moments where an established comedian like Paul Rubens uh, was able to wring out the the most laughs he possibly could out, out of uh, a scene. The action, when it was there, looked like something you would have seen on a weekly episode of Power Rangers, if not worse than that. And the horror, the horror was just so campy and over the top that there was nothing remotely scary about it. It didn't help. There were a lot of scenes in the movie that didn't really seem to have that much style, that much flair when it comes to like the 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 lighting or uh, really the way that it was shot. I would say at best the direction is average and at worst it's firmly below that. I don't agree with some of the critics that said the direction is just completely god awful and horrible and uh, stodgy and lifeless. I don't agree with that entirely because there are some shots in the film that I thought were actually pretty well uh, done uh, with some nice use of camera angles or uh, a pan or a zoom or a push in here or there, but it wasn't something that was very consistent. There were a lot of moments in the movie where the direction was pretty flat, was pretty tepid and did make it kind of feel like a TV movie, which is crazy because the 
the the film would go on to become overshadowed by a TV show. Now, the film features a screenplay by Joss Whedon, but they might as well put uh, quotes around that, or you should use a pseudonym, because so much of his script is missing and completely lost with this adaptation. I don't blame him for walking out on this film. I really don't. Uh, because of the fact that they changed things so dramatically. The original script was darker in tone, definitely had more of an edge to it. I mean, the whole finale involved Buffy burning down the gymnasium to try to stop the vampires. And there were other aspects of it that were definitely darker, like the whole stuff with... Uh, um, um, the character played by uh, Donald Sutherland Merrick and how in order for him to save Buffy, uh, he commits suicide because he doesn't want to become a vampire. So because there's this whole thing where the villain uh, corners him and he's is, is basically screwed. Uh, Lothos has got him and he decides to kill himself and, and in order to save Buffy. And that's very dark, but it also is something that is definitely unique and not something you see a lot when it comes to storytelling, when it comes to uh, the mentor character. So that's something that I definitely feel would have helped the movie. Also, just the way that the character is written is a lot different because uh, Donald Sutherland just decided to come in and just improvise and just do his own shit. And the director didn't really do anything to prevent him from doing that, doing anything like that. So it made the character of Merrick just feel very fractured because of the fact that it was Donald Sutherland was just doing his own thing. He was just going off the rails and off script. And it really made the character feel very flawed when it really could have been a much more consistent, strong character. I do think there are some good character arcs and some good character writing in this script, though. Even even what you ultimately get with the uh, the with the final production, uh, especially Buffy. I really like the way that that character is written. She starts out as a completely selfish, vapid, self-absorbed teenager who cares more about fashion and popularity than anything else. And then when she learns that she's the chosen one and she's a vampire slayer, she changes her personality shifts. She starts to realize just how vapid and dumb uh, she was in a lot of aspects. And that causes splinters with the relationships with her uh, former friends. And she even changes uh, the way that she dresses to, which I thought was kind of in interesting, a nice little touch until she finds kind of a fine line between, uh, being fashionable, but also being a little, little less, uh, um, dressed to the nines or, or, you know, uh, fashionable, but functional kind of, uh, stuff. And yeah, I, I like the character of Buffy in this. I think the way that they, uh, Josh wrote the character, made the character really likable and engaging. And I think Christy Swanson did a great job playing the role, at least this version of the character. And it's just a shame that the character is kind of wasted in this, this toothless adaptation of this concept. I, I didn't mind Pike either. I, 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 I thought the fact that he was kind of a loner and, doing his own thing and it's kind of the same way that he was kind of it was it was a drifter of sorts who didn't even have a home i thought that was kind of different and i thought the way that the script handled him and, and the dynamic between him and buffy i felt that was uh rather strong even buffy and merrick there are some good moments with the two uh when merrick starts training her and and Merrick shares his his uh, backstory, and you 
you really do sympathize with Merrick uh, uh, when it comes to the fact that he's never really allowed to live a normal life. He just keeps coming back uh, throughout all these generations just as this caretaker or this mentor or this teacher for the chosen one. And in a lot of ways, he's immortal, but he he's he, it's one of those things where it's tied into something. And so he builds this bond and this connection and this friendship with these, with these slayers and then they all die. So th that, that was a, a nice uh, bit of uh, reality that was added to, to uh, uh, the script, a nice bit of soul, but there isn't enough of that because too much of the screenplay is campy to the level of, Big Wolf on Campus, the TV show, which I'm okay with that in that vein. In this, it just gets old and it gets repetitive and it just feels like this. it doesn't fit when you have stuff with Merrick and what's going on with him and so on. It doesn't fit when you try to do like the uh, progenitor of clueless and then mix that with you know once bitten or something like it just doesn't really fit the 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 tone is off there's a lot of moments where there's lines of dialogue that are just typical sort of um vapid teenage girl kind of stuff and dealing with that kind of humor but it just doesn't really come across like a satire it just comes across like they're just writing characters that just act that way and then when you have the vampires the way that they're written is pretty laughable lothos is built up to be this big bad like this really evil vampire who could give dracula a run for his money and you never see him do anything that really makes that title something that sticks and it doesn't help either that by the time Buffy fights Lothos at the end, he gets defeated like in like 30 seconds. There's a reason why the character of lefty was someone that, you know, had more of an impression on the audience and in this script, because he fits with the tone that they're going for. It's like this script is trying to have its cake and eat it too, where it's like, oh, it can be campy and silly and dumb and daft, but then also a little serious and kind of intimidating or, or scary. And it never really is able to find a fine balance between those two elements. And... It doesn't help either that it's PG-13. I don't know why this is PG-13. This should have been rated R. Uh, the fact that the the film is definitely something that's rooted in the horror genre, but because of the PG-13 rating, and this is like 90s PG-13, so it's not like late 80s PG-13 where they can get away with more. So because of the PG-13 rating... It has no impact. It has no real bite to it. The vampire scenes, they, they're they're bloodless. They are just weak. The the stuff with anything involving any sort of horror elements are really lame and forgettable. And the action also feels like it's just too sanitized. And even the attempts at satire or humor feel like they don't have as much balls as they could. And the thing is, there's some funny stuff in the end credits, which is more along the line of dark humor that I think this film needed more of. But instead, it just went pure camp, and that just did not work for me. So yeah, it's a script that you can tell that the studio just completely wrecked things, messed with it, took away the edge, took away the darkness, and really just pulled its teeth out. And it's a shame because there are some elements and some good things here, 
but it just feels like a, a a waste of potential when you add it all together when you add it all up and you look at the final product you're just like yeah that's that's kind of that's that's not, it's honestly kind of lame and it could have been a, a a much better uh film and a much better story or script if it just had one of those things where the studio just got out of the way stop trying to make the film more palatable or relatable or something that can lead to a much wider audience you take you took you take away a lot of the film's identity a lot of the script's uniqueness by trying to make it more wholesome which is funny because that's, that's actually in the tagline of the movie which that's the op that's really that's one of the things this film didn't need to be it did not need to be wholesome it didn't need to be full house <laughs> So, yeah, uh, the script to me definitely just a rather anemic screenplay and easily the worst thing about the movie. And I don't full, fully blame Joss Whedon because this script got completely just screwed over and cut to ribbons and messed with during uh, production. The cast, though... I mean, when it comes to the main players, it's pretty good. Kirsty Swanson, I mean, Kirsty Swanson, I think, actually does a spectacular job for what she's asked to do. She's sexy. She's perky. She's precocious. She is believable when it comes to the stunts and the fights because of her own athleticism. She's got enough charisma and personality to make the character... Uh, someone that you enjoy to watch and root for Luke Perry. I was never really a big fan of 90210, but I actually didn't mind him here. He was suave, had a bit of mystery to him. He was kind of a, uh, of a badass in his own way, even though a lot of the time he doesn't really kick a whole lot of, but he definitely needs some help. But it makes sense because he's not Buffy. He's not a chosen one, but he still takes. He still holds his own. I mean, he gets in in a in a in a fight with uh with the Paul Rubens' character, uh, Lefty, and rips his arm off. So he definitely could hold his own. And I feel that him and Kirst, Kirsty Swanson were a really good couple, and I thought they had some good chemistry. Uh, Rucker Hauer as Lothos. It's Rucker Hauer. And Rucker Hauer is, or at least he was, a really talented, tremendous actor. And the few scenes that he's in, he's good. But he's not in, in the film that much. And he's not given a lot to do to really make the character memorable. Which is a shame, because it's Rucker Hauer playing a head vampire. That should be something that should be an automatic slam dunk, and it's not. Donald Sutherland plays Merrick, and Joss Whedon uh, infamously hated Donald Sutherland in this movie, and I honestly don't blame him. Like, Donald just came in and just decided to do his own thing, like I mentioned, and improvise and come up with random lines and then most of the time they didn't fit and they just came across as very bizarre and out of place. And it made his performance very stilted to me, like very uneven. Like there, there are some moments where the performance is actually pretty solid. Some of the scenes with him and Swanson, but then there's other moments where the performance is just really lackluster and, and, and not really that great at all. Especially like the the his death scene, for instance. Um, Paul Rubens, I uh, you know say whatever you want about Paul Rubens, but he was a riot in this. Like one of the reasons why this is a time waster for me, other than Christy Swanson and maybe Luke Perry, is because of Paul Rubens. I mean, there's a reason why that whole scene where he just takes forever to die when he gets a stake in his chest has become 
pretty iconic for a lot of people because Paul Rubens just nails that character and just nails that daffy zaniness, but with a certain sincerity and authenticity that just makes it all, all the more hilarious. Like, ah, 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 <laughs> like that scene will never cease to, to crack me up like that. That is, that's a classic scene. Hilary Swank plays a good uh, bitch in this very unlikable, just bitchy character, but Hey, good for her. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I definitely was not expecting to see Hilary Swank play this kind of character, but this is early in her career. So she's just taking what she can get and she does a good job here. In fact, this supporting cast is full of some really talented actors and actresses uh, in some of their earliest roles. I mean, you got Hilary Swank who plays, uh, Kimberly. You got Paris Vaughn who plays Nikki. You have David Arquette who plays Benny, uh, Pike's friend who becomes a vampire. Uh, Steven Root is in this as the principal. Natasha Gregson Wagner plays a character named Cassandra. Thomas Jane, Thomas Jane. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Thomas Jane plays a character named Zeph. Candy Clark is in this as Buffy's mom, and and she is completely, totally unrecognizable. Uh, ben Affleck is uncredited as a basketball player who has to react to one of the vampires who shows up on 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 the court, and it's honestly pretty hilarious. One one of the funnier scenes in the movie is definitely that scene to me, just because of just Ben Affleck just being this fish out of water. In that moment, Ricky Lake is uncredited as a character named Charlotte. Alexis Arquette's uncredited as a vampire DJ. Seth Green has a little uh, brief scene as one of the vampires. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of actors in this cast that are pretty well known in a lot of different ways. So that's another reason why the film is kind of disappointing because of the fact that you have a supporting cast that's this good. And speaking of disappointing, it definitely doesn't help that the makeup effects and just the overall look of the vampires is just so goofy. It definitely does take a lot out of the movie. And maybe that's the intent. Maybe that's what they were trying to do. But I don't think that was a smart idea. I, I think this film really desperately needed some weight to it, some kind of edge and to just take that completely away when it comes to these vampires and just to make them into these just goofy silly looking uh vampires with floppy ears and it just really it really didn't do the film any favors it, it made it even harder to take seriously Now, the film also features some cin cinematography by James ha Heyman, but it's just kind of there. So is the editing by Jill Savitt. The score by Carter Burwell is very just run-of-the-mill and just mediocre, which is surprising since it's Carter Burwell, who did a lot of stuff with uh, um, um Cohen brothers and, 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 and other well-established filmmakers. I, I don't, I don't know what happened here. Maybe he was just a poor fit. Uh, the soundtrack though has some good songs. There's a good song by Ozzy Osbourne on the soundtrack. And there's a few other, uh, fun little, uh, songs as well. Uh, the rap though, at the beginning, uh, that's one that is aged like milk, but, still a fun soundtrack the movie it's not like two hours so there's that i mean it's like 86 minutes and that's without the end credits uh i mean that's with the end credits so you take the end credits out and it's even shorter so it's not like it's a film that's like excessively long so it's not really too boring but there are a lot of moments where you kind of just 
you're really just drifting in and out when it comes to your investment in the movie because of just how poorly handled the script is in a numer in numerous different ways and because of just the PG-13 rating and the, and the the tone that's just way too light to take seriously let alone find uh suspenseful or uh anything worthy of any kind of tension that's another problem like there's no tension in the story or throughout the film so it just goes through the motions and it's a shame because you have a good idea here a fun concept a good idea and it just doesn't really work and it's it, to me, this film was a poster child for what happens when a studio interferes with a writer's creative vision. And what happens when you have the wrong director for a project as well. Rachel Talley, uh should have been courted to do this, or Mary Lambert, or someone along those lines who really knows how to do this kind of over-the-top, crazy film, but in a way that is still very energetic when it comes to the direction has more consistency when it comes to the tone or the style or the selection of shots and really knows how to amplify or at least at least balance the comedy and and have the right amount of timing and then have uh the same solid timing with the action or or with moments that are trying to be suspenseful or or scary. Instead, you just get Fran Rebel Kazooie, and she's just really not up to the task. And it's just one of those things where the film just winds up becoming a just eh kind of movie where you're like, it's interesting to see you know where Buffy started and so on and so forth, but it's not something that. You know, I would personally call a favorite of mine. It's not something I'm going to watch over and over again. Uh, you know, it's a movie that's just kind of there. It's 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 a time waster at best to me for some of the elements, some of the aspects I've already talked about numerous times. But yeah, it's one of those movies where it could have been a lot better. It really could have. And that's what makes it uh, a movie that... that is really difficult to 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 really uh, want to continue to sink your teeth into. But anyway, uh, that's my uh, thoughts on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.